Yeah, I think the proper, or not proper, but you know, it's like if this is really resonating in the intent that it is meant to, that there isn't a very palpable sense of moving through the questionings because they are getting to the, it's, they're getting addressed at the root. Now, if they're not getting addressed at the root, then we're not going to see that. You know, the questions will go on and on and on and on. So, so that, I think it is important to understand or at least be uh, open to the idea that the questions are coming from a basic root or a basic way of understanding who we are. So if that is addressed very, you know, accurately and clearly, then the, we will get to the root cause. If it's not, then we're not getting to the cause and we're not going to be able... I think that you would see in that case the questions would go on and on and on, the same basic questions. Now, if you've been pursuing something spiritually, having dialogues, reading and all that, and then you find as the years go by that all the same basic questions are actually still there as vital and, you know, as they were before, then, you know, to me that's just a sign that we, you know, have yet to get to the, to the root of it. My feeling on books, you know, having read a lot of books and studied and looked at things over the years in, in seeking, that that trying to get to the bottom of this through books and through understanding and reading at that level, it wasn't particularly effective. Now, it gives you a kind of a broad idea of roughly what we're talking about, but the actual, you know, implementation for us individually for our set of questions, like we may come to the table at some point where we have our basic set of doubts and questions. And, you know, the name of the game there is we're, we're, we're looking at those and addressing those and getting to the root of those. That, that activity is not going to be happening in any book because they're your questions and they're the ones that are up for you and they, ha they mean something for you. So there's a, you can be kind of just reading all these books and gathering all this information and in some way you find that many of the basic questions are not getting addressed. Uh, or sometimes uh, they may be really brilliant questions and answered very well, but they're not your questions. Because a book is really... A lot of books are like recordings of dialogues or whatever, and those are basically snapshots of somebody else's process, you know. Somebody's sitting with a certain teacher and somebody wrote that down, but that's not you sitting there. So it's kind of like a secondary re representation of somebody else. That, so, so there's a kind of a, an inbuilt, often there's an inbuilt limitation uh, about just simply trying to read books and understand this. I, my feeling over the years is it wasn't, uh, it had its purpose, but it was very limited. There's a point where we have to kind of come face to face with our own, uh, what is my direct experience? What are my questions? And there's going to be something in that that's a little mysterious, uh, kind of not fully known to ourselves, because, you know, if it was so clear and we were, we could see the root so clearly, we wouldn't be having the questions. So there's kind of something in that of maybe missing something or not quite seeing something. And often I feel that can come out more effectively in a dialogue with someone. Now, if we just tackle the question, even if we give a kind of a reasonably good answer or you read in a book and somebody gives the, an answer, uh, the, you know, I, we're, I'd be more interested to make sure that we've kind of brought forward the, what's at the root of the question, you know, and, and looked at it at that level. Because answering questions is, eh, you know. Because a mind, you know, you can always think up another question, but yeah. what is driving the arising of that question? What, what is it that I'm really trying to find out by the particular question? So it's like kind of getting to a deeper uh, level beneath the question and then and having a look at that. That's when it starts to get very, very interesting because the more you penetrate below the question, it's like you could have a thousand different questions, but you go to the next level and there's only a kind of a handful of basic issues underneath the questions, and then you can a little bit more looking. You can see that underneath those, there's even a more basic. Yeah. And then, you know, you kind of get this feeling that it, the way that I often look at this is that at the is that at the end of the day, what's driving all the questions is I don't know who I am. At the end of the day, any question is actually just an idea, and it's another way in which the attention is simply going to an idea again nothing wrong with ideas and there's nothing wrong with going to them but 
the way that I look at that is even going to a, a, a kind of a, a of a looking at what's going on and even that m motion like that. And what I find that is the kind of the catch in that is if we are seeking who we are in the idea, that we think that the content of the question, I really got to figure this out. What's really is what's happening is that there, the, the question is an idea. And there's an, an energy going to the thought because there is a subtle seeking of who I am as if it's going to be found at the mental level. Now, if I'm turning to the mind in hopes that I'm going to find the answer to that by the mind giving me a concept, eventually we're going to kind of step back and just simply explore the reality of that. Is that really fruitful? Is it really possible to know who I am? Because, like, you know, what we'll see, another you know, insight as you start to look at this is that uh, the mind is just presenting these concepts, these images that are functional, you know, they're words and images and all that. And then there's really what I naturally am that we start to notice is actually prior to that activity. And you start to realize something that we may have missed, and that is who I am is here preceding the question, preceding the thought. And, oh, I've been looking for that in the mind. And once, if you see that, there's a kind of a, almost like grasping the whole totality of the, what's been hanging us up at kind of one big, you know, bird's eye view. It's like, oh, I've been looking for my identity and thought uh, as if the concept was going to be able to tell me who I am. And one of the, one of the things that you find in this way of looking at things is that, uh, that who you are is not going to be found at a conceptual level. Yeah. That's all you need to see, because if you can yeah. really see that and really see the simplicity of that, why that's not true? Why it's not true? Because you're not a concept. Right. I'm not talking to a concept. I'm talking to a existing, to aware, life. conscious yeah. life yeah. itself. Life, and so, right. oh, and now I'm, if I say, okay, well, why would I find my identity in, you know, in a thought? And then that whole energy around the questioning and the seeking of the mind just can relax down. Now, when that does, I'm here right now without the thought or the question or the idea. And we can just simply like notice and explore and feel and experience what it, what is that state of my being without the concept. That's where the whole structure gets completely undermined. Mm -hmm. And we're not even to answer that question, to know what I am, which is that metaphysical basic question, is gonna be accessible just by direct insight, direct feeling and experience right here and now by simply, you know, noticing and feeling into what is my nature. I'm not going to go out to the, to the thought to do that. At its own level, those structures and tools are very useful and necessary, and they're very, there's nothing wrong with them. But the, the catch of it really is if, I, if I'm looking for what I am in those structures, that's the catch. The concepts are not a problem as concepts. It's the way we're kind of searching for something in them that you're going to find is not available in those. I can't really go to a thought to tell me who I am when my natural state is here preceding the thought. It's a very simple kind of mechanical basic observation. So when I realize that my true being or the, the fullness of what I am is not going to be provided to me through at a conceptual level, then that identity, searching for identity in those structures relaxes off of that. Now, I can still go back and use those, but to be what I am and to know what I am, I don't need to use those, and I know that now, and, and it simplifies this whole thing immensely. The mind is continuing to provide conceptual definitions of who you are. I'm a spiritual person. A spiritual person doesn't do this. I don't like this. Be but you, you realize, if you've seen this holistically, you realize even those statements are just more of that same mechanism of trying to define myself in a concept. You know, your being, your natural state here is not a seeker or do-gooder or it's not in the world, it's not out of the world. I mean, every one of those statements is just a, a way of the mind kind of crystallizing a concept. So they're not, none of those is adequate to what you are. And each one, each and every one of those, if it's, if it's approached um, trying to define who we are, there will be a feeling of limiting, like a feeling of something is kind of pinching. Although if there's a relaxation off that, there's an immediate spacious openness. And in that spacious openness of who we truly are, that's not a seeker. It's not a problematic self. There's no notion of like, I'm in the world or out of the world. It doesn't even enter the picture really. So the mind says, you know, you're this, and it's just an idea. And I guess it's, you know, 
And somehow there's something in that that suddenly it feels like it pinches. And what, I, what I've seen with that is that, you know, prior to the concept, it's kind of wide open, spacious, undefined. It's kind of just, it's not limited. It's kind of, there's no particular boundary on what presence is or what, it, what, what existence is. Now, every concept becomes a defined, kind of bounded image. Uh, if, I, if I see it as a box and it's just used as a box, there's no pinch. But if I overlook the natural state of being that I am and I try to almost like shrink that down as if it was equated with that box, that's the pinch. So to take the spacious presence and try to funnel it down to something that's very narrow, you can kind of viscerally start to feel why that would feel uncomfortable. If I, if I tried to put a sho shoes on that were many sizes too small, my foot would be hurting. Yeah. So if I try to fit my natural state down to the level of a concept, it's not going to feel free. And that concept can be even a spiritual concept. And then uh, if we're at all curious, or we have these dialogues and we're curious and we're examining what's going on, then all of the, the way that it works and how, how the limit is constructing is all being presented to us in our direct experience every moment. Because here we are without the thought, and that there's the total freedom everybody's looking for is right here, right now. I mean, it's totally here. You know, in these pointers that people talk about being, it's here. Awareness, it's here. Spaciousness is here. Natural state is here. For you and for me, it's completely, the whole thing is completely in evidence. And there's that pause, that kind of without the box, without the thought. That's like getting that taste of the natural state, not as a spiritual concept or reading in a book, but we are in the immediacy of the living reality, actually knowing what we're talking about, actually experiencing this natural, awake, open being that is, there's nothing deniable about it, it's nothing theoretical, and it's nice to just, like, tap right into that, ah, here we are, like what we've been reading and searching for all these years, it's like suddenly, it's like here we are. Now, that gap that comes in there suddenly allows a little bit of an opening because if, if a concept suddenly appears, it's so clearly a bounded box. And even if there is a little bit of a pinch, we're seeing it now from knowing the, the spacious place, you know, prior to the pinch. And that is a total grace, a total revelation because, well, there is the demonstration of how suffering arises. And now that we kind of have that way of looking at it, we can see, well, God, is that make, is that true? Does that make any sense? Am I really limited to this idea? Or am I the spaciousness? And that the answer is so clear. Because you were there even just before that thought appeared. So we get very familiar with how the mind works and how the suffering arises and the direct recognition of our natural state. And that is essentially all that we need to see. Because if you get familiar with this, you start to realize the, you know, the availability of this. You're going to start to see very amazing things like you've never left this. Mm. You know, you can't, there's nothing you can do to switch it off. If we don't understand who we are, we don't understand the simplicity of, of what we're pointing to in terms of what your true state is, then we are still continuing to f hope that we can find that in the structure. Eventually we start to, that's when you more like step back and get this holistic view. You start to wonder, well, what's the whole mechanism here? You know, I've tried this, I've tried this concept, this teaching, that goal, this guru, this book, this system. And you've given it the old college try and something is dawning on you that nothing is quite delivering. Now, and maybe you'll stumble across something where, yeah, but did you see who you are? Did you see where you're actually standing? And there's a recognition of that. And you can't deny that when it's pointed to a, a simple clarity and an ease and something very kind of clear about it that we, we can never lose that. We can never kind of pretend that's not there or whatever. Now, uh, and that's, I think, the difference is because even if a limiting concept comes up, it just doesn't have the steam. Yeah, you, you really gave some trust there, you know, because you said, once you've seen it or something, you know, whatever, you said that kind of thing, even that temptation can't sustain. And yeah. you've given us trust to say, like, it's not, uh, oh, I'm back in the temptation. I'm more anxious than ever, you know, because I have even seen it already. And now I'm back there again. You just said it can't sustain right? yeah. because it's just going to peter out. It'll fizzle, right? Yeah, I think that's why you have to see, like I was saying, what it, 
what is the real, what has been the root driver of us ever from the beginning con- actually searching for identity in any, any concept was I didn't know who I was. I didn't know the nature of my being. I never had noticed the true experience. And so there was something propelling me to try to answer that. Now, once we see where we stand, the basic reason for the whole search in that way is now has been exposed. And we can never go back to that same level of ignorance or kind of blindness around it. Never, you will never be able to go back. And all you're dealing with at that point is if something, an old structure, an old attempt to find in the mind, if that does appear, the beauty of it is actually, and even if there is a belief in it, there's energy going to it, you got the immediate sense of the limit or the constriction that automatically doesn't feel natural. So you got that lesson or life is pointing out right away to you, this isn't it, this isn't who you are, this isn't natural. So that's, that's good. That's hardwired into this thing. So that's why I'm, I'm a big believer in this kind of getting to the core, because if we get to the core to see what's what, then life itself and these appearances, they keep, they naturally reveal to us what we need to see moment by moment. You know, so, oh, there was a thought, you're this, you should do that, and then a little bit of belief goes into that, oh, wow, doesn't feel that great. What's going on? Oh, that's just an idea. What am I again? Oh, and there you are. And what I found and my approach to this, my understanding is, you know, this freedom and this uh, openness of whatever we're pointing to here, that really is what it is. It's not something beyond that. And it doesn't, it's so, it doesn't even, you know, you know, these spiritual things that we hear, uh, like, you know, like, let's say, awakening, is redundant to what we're seeing together. Because what's here right now is this awake, aware presence. So instead of it being like some kind of conceptual attainment, it's actually in the immediacy of the full awakeness, the full aware reality is actually shining here, you know, as part of the fabric of existence. And we were thinking in the mind of someday if I get awakened, something will happen for me, but that's in the structure. But here we are right now as the non-conceptual awareness. And it's like, well, isn't that what they were saying all along, that reality is the non-conceptual awareness? And you and I right now are, for lack of a better word, simply abiding as that, not as entities, but just because that is what's here right now. And, you know, it's something very, very important to realize is that that's what this is. And here we are. And it's just a kind of a noticing and appreciating that, you know, what we've been after through the concepts turns out to be here. And then in noticing that, that this is not going to go anywhere. So we get up after this interview and go walk off somewhere and do whatever, and this is still going to be as present there as it is right now. And in all of our experiences and thoughts and all that, this you, you will notice something which is kind of stunning in a way that this is unconditioned and constant. I mean, it's really not anything that depends on anything happening or coming and going. It's not even personal. It's like we've been swimming around in the sea of aware, awake presence every second the whole time. And it's almost like the availability of it was almost so simple in a way that it's like we kind of just overshot it. But aren't you awake and aware and existent right now, naturally, effortlessly now? Again, in the idea, if there's the idea that there's some marvelous state that's not present and there's me, then somehow you feel like I, you know, I'm going to get it through effort or maintain it or it will arrive. But when you actually kind of challenge that a little bit to come back to what's really present, you realize it's not over there, and I'm not over here, and what the natural being is here is actually on our own experience right now. It is not an effort. You know, like you're not making an effort to be. It's actually given automatically, like right. almost like a pure grace, because nobody's even doing anything. And all of those qualities that are often pointed to as what is real are here now, if we actually just care to simply, you know, if we talk of the awareness, the spaciousness, and all that. So, you know, if my own true nature is the reality, which is the pointer, 
if I go seeking for it, in a way it kind of moves me away from noticing the obvious. And that's not going to bring me any closer to what's already present. And we eventually learn that lesson because it just it simply doesn't work. So if we, if we kind of appreciated this idea that the natural state of being where, where the ease and the openness is, is here right now, which it is. So you can just feel like if the mind suddenly told me, when I get it, then I'm going to be there. You could, you know, there's kind of a, a duality that arises in that. Especially if we'd miss the simplicity of the fact that it's already present. We'd actually, so if I grip and grip and push and push and effort more and more and more and more on some concept, uh, it just kind of dawns because it's kind of common sense. It's not really working. I'm not really getting anywhere. So you kind of allow this idea that maybe you could step off of that, and then here we are. And you got to, you know, but these things that kind of sound, you know, when we first hear them, like. Uh, you're not making an existence to be, or you're not making an effort to be, or, you know, the natural awareness is not something that you're constructing, it's already functioning, you know, or those kinds of things, they start to show us that the, uh, like a different, there's something else about this, this is like a kind of a reversal of what we assume. What we're talking about for me has not required a lifestyle change. So the normal routine of life, working, taking care of family, and all the things that we all, most people are doing in the world, that is not a bar or some kind of hindrance to what we're talking about. Because, I, I, you know, the, my life situation is such that that's all carried on. The whole time, you know, even while interested in this and having these things pointed out to me at one stage, you know, it's still a working person, still a functioning, you know, person in life and all that. But uh, now there was a time in life where it seemed to me that the only way to see what we're talking about is you must pull away and go to a monastery and alter your life and do all these radical changes. I thought that actually, and I did a lot of those things at one stage. But that turned out to be actually a bit of a misunderstanding. Yeah. Did you do them for a while? Because then people will say, oh, that was a preparation, you know, they'll make an excuse. Well, I did them because I was suffering and I was trying to f do anything that I could do to, you know, kind of get to the bottom of it. And uh, and I would hear people would say, well, if you do this, that'll be the answer. If, if you do this, if you learn Sanskrit, if you wear Indian clothes, if you go here, if you go there. So I'm, sign me up, you know, I'll try anything, you know. But over the years, as at that phase, the, I just, it eventually dawned on me that that, that wasn't really in and of itself wasn't really getting to the root of, of what I felt I was really, you know, we all just want that natural happiness and clarity of being at peace, basically. And that really wasn't forthcoming as a result of those activities. Now, my life situation was such that I needed to work and support family and have a career and go to school and all that. Uh, so I, I just, I didn't really have, I just, I needed to do that. So I just carried on with that. But the spiritual looking and and this was also something that was kind of going on just right along with that and uh, what I, and this is not a, it's not a there's no uh, uh, conflict between that it turns out yeah because this is that... actually fairly simple like you know we can see what we need to see and understand these basic points completely irrespective of what you know physically we're doing and even when we do see these things and that clarity and that simplicity is there we can still work and function and support and be productive citizens in the appearance of things. So I just kind of, that whole issue of the lifestyle and the pulling away from the world and trying to, as if that was something that was like vitally connected to this, uh, in my experience, is simply untrue. What we really want to see is the, the simple truth of what is real and who we are. That's, I mean, that's, the, that's, that's what it's about, you know. And it turns out what, I, what I'm saying is that the, the particular lifestyle that was going on wasn't really the key issue. Because there are many people that are working and carrying on a normal life that do see this. I know many people that it's very clear to them. So uh, I just, you know, the, as, a, as a seeker at one stage, you, your mind would make certain assumptions of what you, oh, it's, it's really got to look like this. But that turns out to be one of those concepts. You could be doing those things, and seeing this, I mean, if you really see the simplicity of you know here we are and this is this is what it is and it's kind of independent of what our bodies and minds are doing, then you realize 
that that's not what it's about. And then our bodies and minds are just carrying on in whatever way that they're functioning. But we're not linking in, oh, I, I did this, I did this, I did this, and because of all these outer things, that was how I arrived. And then you turn around and start telling people that they're supposed to do that. Because that's just, that just kind of misses, you know, in a sense, the essence of what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more like, a, in the way that I'm talking about, it, it's more of an understanding. It's more of, a, of, a, of, a, of an openness to see what's true in experience. It's really not so much an action-oriented thing. And those actions for all of us are going to look different because we're all different and because of the situation that we find ourselves in. And I've done my share of all those spiritual activities. And I'm sure in their way, because, you know, every pointer and every tradition, there is some underlying alignment with this. Who are you? What's real? You know, look at who you are. I mean, there's some flavor of that in every, in every, every, every tradition, every path. And that was in the background, kind of. But when it really comes down to just that direct looking and really cutting it down to what we need to see, it's like right then and there, you're just in the living immediacy of the present reality and all that stuff about what we did and where we were and all that it doesn't it's not even entering into the, right now you know it's like it just kind of shifts off of that level and then you realize this kind of truth which is you know why we talk about this and you have your website and there's something comes up to want to share and let people know is that uh, we can see this now you know we as you know normal functioning people who are just have a heart uh, motivation, like a yearning to basically kind of get to the bottom of things, all of us, no matter where we find ourselves, in family, out of family, spiritual, single, whatever, uh, we all have access. Because why? Because the reality of what we're talking about is still available, still sustains, is unconditional. You know, even, uh, and so those, those the, again, you know, that's not what is going to be causing or preventing us. It's really, I would say, which is a kind of a pointer, is that our heart's sincere longing to get to the root of things, that simple, sincere desire to know what's true, that is coming up independently of where these bodies and minds happen to be. And you see it all throughout history, you know? Uh, And... um, If that's there, then life kind of maneuvers us to a place where we hear a a kind of a simple pointing that reminds us. We take a look, we see, and we realize, oh, this is what is, and look how simple it is, and, you know, I may have missed this. But that activity is kind of moving independently of what the bodies and minds are doing. Because many, you know, uh, you you can absolutely see this, understand this, recognize this, get to the root of it, absolutely no matter what you're doing in life. If you're on an assembly line, if you're an executive, if you're having a divorce, if you're a yogi, wherever you are, this, this message, this insight is totally, absolutely available for you. It's, and that's, that's the beauty of it, actually, you know. If the energy of living is not going into all of those, you know, whirl, you know, kind of like uh, whirlpools in the mind of self-centered thinking and problems and all that. There's just more life energy and more presence and kind of you just, there's more availability to, in the functioning that's there. And I mean, one would naturally, I think, assume that there's going to be a little bit more clarity and harmony and, and ease around it. Now, if that will attract somebody or they'll notice something or, I mean, however that plays out, it's going to, you know, it will play out. But I mean, basically, yes, because what drags people down in life is the energy getting all sucked up in all the personal self-centered problems. And what we're talking about easily kind of maneuvers us out of that zone. So there's the body, mind, life essence shining through, functioning in its you know, situation that it finds itself in without all that kind of mental crap going on. So it's almost kind of like self-evident, you know, I mean, what, what that, you know, how that's going to, you know, play out. Now we can't, there's no blueprint that says, okay, now it's going to, it's going, you know, you're going to do this and you're going to do that because it is, it's just the, the flowing and manifesting Mm -hmm. of life is going to be arising out of that vehicle, out of that expression in its own way. But can you imagine, you know, without the self-centered suffering, without all that obsession, 
what do you think that that life will look like? So, thanks so much, John. Yeah, great to talk to you, Richard. Yeah. John Wheeler. What a luck, huh? Here in Australia. I would have had to go to Santa Cruz, right? <laughs>